Welcome to NC Debrief coming to you right here on News Central. The Debrief brings Africa's social stories into focus through analysis and perspectives every week. With our guests, we look at dissecting the pressing issues and also look out for angles and opinions that may not be in the mainstream. I'm Tolu Lokwe at Dileri Balogwin. It's great to know that you're on the other side of this camera watching me. Now today, we're looking at why should Africans in the diaspora return home? Don't forget that you can join the conversation using the hashtag NC Debrief and also share your thoughts on this with us. Now joining me on today's conversation, I have Adeolu Adefarasi. He's a actor, a presenter, as well as a content producer. I also have Michael Smith with me. He's a lawyer as well as a brand and communications consultant. So a bit of background, gentlemen, before we start. Now, 2019 marks the 400th anniversary of the start of the transatlantic slave trade. Ghana has taken advantage of this anniversary to launch the Year of Return Ghana 2019, which celebrates the cumulative resilience of all the victims of the transatlantic slave trade who were scattered and displaced throughout the world in North America, South America, the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia. But before this year, there have been conversations and drives throughout the continent encouraging Africans who have left and even those of African descent throughout the world to return here, to home, as we would say. As far back as the early 1800s, the Back to Africa movement encouraged Africans, or rather Americans of African descent and ancestry, to return to Africa. Not the original homelands, which in most cases were unknown, but to the continent. Sadly, that movement failed. Now, let's start this conversation updating it in the 21st century in 2019. And I'll start by asking the gentleman here, Adeolu, let me start with you. What brought you back to Nigeria? Truth or like the... <laughs> no, let's, let's talk the truth. You want the truth here. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> let's have an honest um, conversation. So why did I come back to Nigeria? Honestly, um, it, it's something that I told myself I was never going to do. Hmm. And then I... I was in America at the time and I you know, I was chasing a grind as an actor and I found myself not enjoying the work so much anymore because you get to a point where you're doing what you can, not what you want to. Mm. And for me, the idea of coming back to Nigeria was like, ah, these guys don't know now. So you just come back to Nigeria, you teach these guys how to do what they're meant yes, to do. Yes, you're coming to show them the lights. <laughs> exactly, right? And so therefore I thought, okay, you'll come and you'll get work more easily, be able to choose and be able to have control over what you want to do. Mm. So therefore be creating the kind of content I wanted to make, um, be acting the kind of roles I wanted to do. So I thought, I mean, come back home and you'll, you'll be able to have kind of like a rule of everything, right? Okay, I'm going to pause because that actually is one of the questions I have for you when we get into that aspect. If you found it that being a returnee and sometimes having an accent and different perspective sort of puts you ahead, you know, giving you a bit of privilege. But when we get to privilege, we'll talk about that. So, Michael, <laughs> why did you come back? Oh, uh, For me, I, I started uh, my childhood education here, mm -hmm. but not in a Nigerian system. I went to the American International School in Jos. So I've always been sort of cushioned and cocooned by foreigners. Mm. And then I went off to England. Um, at some point in time, uh, I realized, well, actually it was my mom's sister, who actually said, you know, sister, these kids do not have a real connection, connection mm. with home. And I feel it's important that you bring them back so they can have that connection. So that was really, it was more like a family decision that, you know, you guys need to come back. So. This is making me back. think of my situation. My mother used what Nigerian parents, we, they don't know it, but we can call it emotional manipulation mm. in terms of bringing back. Yeah. Don't split the family up. You yeah. don't have a connection. You don't know your mother's side. You don't know your father's Correct. side. Come Absolutely, home. Absolutely, yeah. Guess what? A few years yeah. later, many years later, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here, you know? But aside from that, like when we talk about returning, many people tend to assume, especially if you were young when you mm. left, versus sometimes being born abroad and then coming back, that culture shock doesn't come into play. But after a number of years out of the country, culture shock even still comes yeah. into play. It's big time. It, it's, it's massive. And I remember yeah. some of the things I'm just like, what are these people doing? Mm. What, what is this? Yeah. I didn't know, did culture I shock mean, affect you? I think there's no way it's not going to. I mean, for someone that even then I come home every Christmas, most summers, like it doesn't change. Let me no tell you, even people who go on Nigeria holiday real, when they come exactly. back. Exactly. <laughs> there's a difference to when it's real. Yeah. Like when you're actually back in Nigeria, first off, NYC was the first introduction to oh, no. culture NYC. shock, right? Like, <laughs> there's no, for me, as far as I always said, it's the introduction to corruption in Nigeria. Wow. It just teaches, it starts to teach you the ways, the things you have to do. Corruption to 101. Exactly. Mm. Wow. Right? And so there's all of those different aspects of this, and I think 
it's little things. The moments you speak and they hear small accents, they really caught you, so they know that they're going to treat you a certain way. way. And mm -hmm. you, you, so you have to negotiate all these kind of things. There's no way it's not going to affect you. Mm. I think when you talk about culture shock, you know, you are, you're home, but you're not home. You're part of, but yeah, you're, you're still not, an you're outsider still an somehow. Outsider, and that, mm. that's tough, because over there, you, it's blatant yeah. that you're not one of them. Yeah. Right? I mean, I went to a school where there were 560 odd white boys, Methodist school, and there were 10 blacks. And out of that 10, my brother was one of them. Mm. And then, you know, to struggle through all that, and then eventually you want to come home, and you get in, and you find that you're still, like you said, once you start yeah. speaking, they're like, what did you say? Oh, you know, goodness. yeah, and pigeon English, like, was crazy for me. I could so not do, understand do you speak what pigeon they were now? saying. I was told I shouldn't try it. Do you speak pigeon? <laughs> I, I, people will say that I do. I will say I that do. I do. You so think I, you do? I, I will but say that I do. I, people I will say that I don't. I'm sad. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't speak you don't. pigeon. You don't. I don't. Really. And when we talk about this culture shock, people, like the first time Nepa took light, mm. I almost died. <laughs> I will not lie. And then sometimes finding out water has stopped and I'm like, what, what's, going what's going on? on? And it. It's also a resilient thing for me. I found that over the years, being able to survive, because you find things are much more easier in those mm, societies, mm. and certain things are as expected. But here, you almost have to fight for certain things. And yeah. it, every once in a while, when the anniversary comes up, I pat myself on the back that, babes, you've made it. Yeah. You know, Nigeria <laughs> hasn't broken yeah. you in yeah. a way. But also, mm. some people also look at it in terms of, because you have an option. You can pick up a bag and a passport, and you can leave. leave. That mm. is sort of insulates you from the true reality that at any point in time you can say, you know what, I'm not doing this with Nigeria again, mm. I'm not doing this with Africa again, and you bounce. What do you think about that, Adiolu? I mean, I think people say, of course, there's the privilege of that option, mm -hmm. but the reality of it for me, and it's not presented itself as an option for me. Mm. I think one, because I've always, you know, my parents always brought, up, brought us up, and I heard my uncle say it recently, so I have a feeling it came from their parents, <laughs> that you're always a second-class citizen where you're not from. Yeah. Mm. And the reality of it is we all, a lot of people are getting frustrated and jumping on planes to Canada and all those kind of things, but the reality of it is if we don't fix Nigeria and Nigeria ceases to be cool, you might be able to leave the country, but you're never going to be able to say that you are where you are from. Mm. And so... Because of that, I believe there's a there's a there's an onus or not that that we have to do better. We have to be able to invest ourselves in doing better for Nigeria. Because like I know for myself, as much as I grew up in England and everything, if I had to go back, I'd be starting from scratch. Wow. I've managed to start to build things for mm -hmm. myself here, mm -hmm. which means you know if I go, to, who knows my name? Like you have to start again. That's the mm -hmm. reality of it. And no one wants to have to do that, especially when you grow in a position of maturity and growing in different aspects of your life. True. Very true. What, what I find, you know, just to chip in there is, you know, when you, the people would ask you when you're there, where are you from? Yeah. You know, and when you say Nigeria, because there, there's already a perception of the continent or your country, if it's bad, automatically you feel at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. But if your country is doing well, and you're able to say with all sense of pride, you know, I come from Nigeria, and oh, great country, then you find that even over there, you are, you know, in terms of the crisis, mm. you're not, in terms of identity, you, you sort of have settled in. Yeah. There's a sense of pride. Yeah. I remember those days when, um, well, the gentleman who's in power was in power then, mm. and going with a green passport through immigration. And it was a thing of shame. But when the war against indiscipline, you know, campaign started, we went through the same immigration and there was a sense of pride. pride. You mm. would hold the passport with a sense of pride. But I think all of that, uh, and given what um, Adiolu also said, comes into play when the country itself seems to be functioning, seems That's to right. be doing the necessary yeah. thing. And yeah. the countries are only made up of their people. Mm. They're only as good as the people that represent them, that bear the blood, that are the citizens mm. of those countries. Now let's get into talking about expectations. Now filmmaker um, Mohamedi El Muhahir, who lives in Ghana, wrote that, I don't want people to think that Africa is this magic utopia where all your issues will go away. <laughs> it's just that some of the things you might face in America or in the UK or in Europe, um, you won't have to suffer those things here. You may not have electricity, but you won't get killed by the police either. Now with SARS, we might put a question mark to that. <laughs> he goes on to say, how informed are people when they're moving here? Are they oblivious of our own issues? Do they realize that while racism may not be an issue in some of our countries, tribalism, Afrophobia are real problems that we face? Do we exaggerate our problems in line with what they have been taught about Africa? What are they missing? So do you think you made the right decision in movie and you were really ready to manage yeah, whatever yeah. Nigeria threw at you, Adiolu? Um, ready, I'm not sure. Right decision, definitely. Mm. I think 
look, at the end of the day, like he said, one of the things that you can look at is, okay, do you know the problems? Do you know yeah. the issues? Mm. The reality is that even us here, do we know the issues? Because a lot of people might see problems and be able to point out things that are not great. But do we actually know the heart of the issue? If you know yeah. the heart of the issue, yeah. you might be a lot further along yeah. and actually how yeah. to fix it. Yeah. But we, we operate from a position where the reason that foreign perception of us is not great is often we don't have the great best perception of ourselves. Mm. We don't often look at the positives of what it's like to be here. We don't look at the hope that there is. You know, and everything comes down to perspective. Yes, there are a lot of issues, but a lot of those countries had to deal with those issues. Before and they the, became the who they are. The reality of mm. it is that issues, depending on your perspective, is actually opportunities. One of the reasons why people can come back from abroad and make money is because things that are a struggle that, like us, you, you're, you have to work really hard to mm. find ground in there because people, like, because we're so far behind, it doesn't take me a lot to realize what it take for us to improve in terms of water because other genera- other countries have been through it and mm-hmm. we've seen how they've we managed it. We can leapfrog. We can start yeah. to yeah. Yeah. implement those things here. There are opportunities. There's so much we can do yeah. because there isn't 24-hour light. There are opportunities for how you provide energy. There are opportunities to be able to start to say, I can be part of the solution. Mm. But if you're busy complaining about them, then you don't step into those opportunities. Mm. Michael, what do you think about that? In terms of managing perceptions, coming back and thinking, okay, I'm here, I'm going to settle into Nigeria, I'm going to make of this what it will be. Mm. Um, were you fully prepared? Were you, even your own um, mind space? Because many of us, when you travel, you don't realize how much you take in the biases and perceptions mm. of the West mm. when you yourself are thinking of your mm. own country, you know? So were you also prepared to sort of fully immerse yourself in the Nigerian experience? Would you ever be fully prepared? I don't think so. I mean, I think for me, um, even till today, the things that still shock me, and you know, because, I mean, you were talking about... And how, how long have you been here now? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, things like the power issue. Mm. So you find yourself go on vacation and then and in the house and, you know, the refrigerator just, you know, just steps down a little bit and mm. your mind automatically thinks they've taken power. Mm. You know, so those things are still there. And you, I sit back and I'm like, after all these years, I'm still not used to the fact that yeah. there's an environment where there's 24, you know, our power. But in terms of the things that I was, you know, prepared for um, or wasn't prepared for, I remember NYC, for example. That seems to uh, be a point for almost yeah, all of us. Yeah, NYC, <laughs> I had to say to myself, I mean, you've gone from where you have showers and you're, you know, having and privacy. privacy and all that to going into the bush, you know, <laughs> <laughs> survival, <laughs> you know, and I have a little bit of cologne and a... Uh, <laughs> handkerchief and then like this is not happening to me you know, it's this true you wanted to have an out of body experience just, you know, can so I, I do created, like Dorothy yeah. and clap my feet you and know, be out so of this Kansas yeah, I just created a I preserved the Michael Smith mm. that had the exposure that had the culture mm. and I just learned to adapt to I just created a, a person I'm not the Michael Smith that is here it's in Nigeria. Here, yeah. Mm. So that I could adapt. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we want to get into issues of privilege and social currency in terms of being a, a returnee back to Nigeria or anywhere else on the continent. We'll also look at this IGB card I just got back. Does it exist? <laughs> Do people like them, I won't say them, but people like us, do they play that card? And is there some kind of social advantage in being a returnee? But we'll also ask before we wrap up, where exactly is home? And I think that's a question many of us, till date, still try to struggle uh, to answer in these situations. You're watching um, NC Debrief, do stay with us. You're still watching NC Debrief right here on News Central. Thank you so much for joining us. And we know, of course, you can watch via Instagram Live as well as Twitter. And we want to see all of your comments and contributions to this conversation. Use the hashtag NC Debrief. We are continuing the conversation now. Let's look into the issues of privilege and social Mm. currency as a returnee. Um, Were you treated differently? I almost feel like I know the answer to this question. (laughs) But I want you guys to share your own experiences. Were you treated differently? How did you feel? about being treated differently, looked at differently, being perceived differently as well? And would you consider it a privilege? Because a lot of times people tend to assume that being a returnee, all of it, all of that treatment tends to be positive. It's not all mm. always positive. Sure. Adelu? Mm. Um, I was like, don't come to me first. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you treated differently? Definitely, and there are definitely some parts of it that are good. Mm. Yeah, definitely parts of it that are positive. 
for me, you know, in terms of what it is, and I don't think so much is actually about being a returnee at all. It's simply having the opportunity where you have people that have relationships. For me, mm. you know, there's always the positive of ha having parents that have that know people and they mm. give, and that people will know. give you a foot in the door. Mm. You know, and but putting your foot in the door is just that. I think that you still have to prove yourself when you get there. Yeah. And then there are the negative sides of being a returnee where people like like I said, the moment they hear a voice, even recently to now, mm. because my accent has not completely come changed. back, right? Mm. Yeah. Has not completely come back. <laughs> but so now I get to a point where um, I went to the market and the moment they hear my voice, like you can't try and negotiate. The price even doubles are pushing pulls. Like, <laughs> no, I, I can try and negotiate as best as I can, mm. right? But there's only a limit to which I can do. The best I can do is eventually just walk away mm. because the reality of it is there are certain perceptions I mean that yeah. are mm. really one up this person. Mm. So yeah, there were definitely great opportunities that came out to me in terms of getting my foot in the door. Um, but then you still have to go and show yourself. And, and if, if the privilege was that great, but now, you know, I will be... <laughs> Top yeah, billing. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, when he that. talks about, you know, putting your foot in the door, some people say that's part of... That's a major part of the privilege because some people don't even get access to the door. They don't yeah. see it. They don't yeah. smell it. Yeah. So in terms of privilege and social currency and even just access to some social classes that um, being able to say, I schooled where, or you continue to have an accent, yeah. or yeah. just being able to say, you know, certain people who can then help you with certain things, that's one of the major positives of it. And we can't, we can't deny Correct. that, can Absolutely. we? Yeah, I mean, because, you see, there's already a mindset. Um, and I'm, I'm going to use an example when it comes to even resources, mm. um, Nigerians sending remittances, yeah. you know, the feeling that once you're out there, you're doing better. Even if you're living in an apartment, you know, and you're Or walking, you're living in your car, you're and you're your doing car, three jobs. But just the fact that mm. you have an accent, and you're out there, there's a feeling that, oh, he must be doing great. Mm. Um, and you're m used to people sending money to you, mm -hmm. and it's not usually the other, other way, way around. around. So because there's that, what I would call a superiority and inferiority complex thing going on, um, the moment you come back with an accent, definitely you are at an advantage, um, particularly if you're looking for work and things like that, mm. because people tend to feel, okay, he's cultured, he's exposed, he, you know, must have some resources, even socially as well, you know, um, there's always that feeling. But like Addy said, you know, um, when you then go to certain places and you are... <laughs> They, they see it also as an opportunity to take advantage of yeah, you. Yeah. So that's really, um, he doesn't know, he's just JJC sort of a thing. Mm. You know? And people would definitely do that. That's you know? true. Well, now, think, um, okay, go ahead. Sorry, just add one thing that I do think has to be taken in as the main advantage, forget accents and everything, it's simply that that level of exposure gives you a perspective that's different. You yes. Know? You don't, your mindset is not limited. All of a sudden, like, I can go through hard times and there might be struggles financially in different seasons or whatever. But simply because of the exposure I've had, I have a cultural, I have a mindset and a perspective that lets me think, not limit the way that I think or mm. then think that this is good enough. I will always believe that there is more and I can take into that more simply because I've experienced more and I'm not going to therefore accept less mm. or think that, you know, because I think that's one of the biggest issues we face as a majority of people. What we're striving for is limited simply because of people's exposure. Correct. Mm. Mm. And that also comes mm. into play with, of mm. course, the battle for the basics, for the food, yeah. the water, exactly. the shelter. Yeah. And it affects how you can, in a way, dream sometimes yeah. and hope and look to fulfill your potential. But I don't know, I'm still going to put you on the spot. And you mentioned it just a bit <laughs> briefly, so let's get into bits more detail about that. You're a trained actor. And we've seen many Nigerians come back into the Nigerian entertainment industry and make it big. Tiwa Savage, David O, um, Osa Sigadaro. We also have radio and TV presenters um, who... By virtue, we will have to say, of an accent of basically saying they schooled abroad, they've sort of been ushered in, or it's, some would even say it's been easier for them than others. I really can't say that's personal experiences yeah. uh, that determine that. But do you think um, an accent has been of a of a of an assistance to you in the entertainment industry in terms of aside from getting your foot in the door now, but either in terms of getting roles, um, either in being able to push your content, have meetings with people who want to help you do the things you want to do. You know, um, she didn't put her name on that. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> and I'm, internally, I feel a bit guilty about that because I, also, I do recognize the privilege that it has afforded me as correct, well. But yeah, correct. you guys are the guests. I mean, I think, I think there's a perspective. There's definitely a perspective in part, especially when it comes to things like, let's say, presenting, mm -hmm. um, that the accent might help out. Um, when it comes to being heard or being communicable. But I think that that 
is weird because the reality of it is the reason that it helps you out is because the networks they end up working on the networks that are likely more often on DSTV, which means your audience is mm. limited to the 1% as well, Yeah, which is why they care about that. So it's sort of, you, it, it makes you connect network, with them, yeah. But if you want to be on the hugest networks that are terrestrial TV because they reach all of Nigeria, people that can't afford DSTV, then you're probably better off not having an accent because then the people will understand you. But are we also an aspirational sense. country? Yes. People yeah. aspire to be certain things. So yeah, that also, also sort of be relatable. Yeah, yeah. Very let's true. be honest. You look yeah. at people in government. Why are the people in government that are in government? Because when they go and talk to people on ground, people understand them and people can relate to them. Mm. So that's for me. I think what it is is beyond the accent, it's simply um, a lot of the time education system in Nigeria and what it is right now means that people who are often educated here are tend to be taught to cram as opposed to mm. being taught to actually exactly learn how and to learn. Exactly. And that and means that knowledge. transferable skills are not mm. as um, mm. as readily available. So if you have transferable skills, you know that if I'm sitting having a conversation with you, I know how to diversify certain things. Mm. I know how to communicate certain mm. things. I know how to um, intellectually translate certain bits of information. Mm. You have a lot of people who are struggling in the workforce in Nigeria because of the quality of education. That they, and they pass law school, mm. but they still can't write a letter mm. if I mm. hire them in your mm. office. Mm. And those are the things that come with coming from board beyond the accents. Yeah. The yeah. accents is just the and box that it's to in. To that point, you also notice that you know there's always a level of confidence that you just have. In a, mm. You know, that you just have. It's just yeah. there. You take it for granted. But then when you interact with, like I said, a lot of your contemporaries, you know, um, it, they you may not that have that not, same. They don't have that yeah. same. Because yeah. you're talking about presentation. Okay, guys, so, time is not with us. And I yeah. really want to ask this question <laughs> because I'm a person who feels that oftentimes I have divided loyalties. I have okay. a second home. And I think everybody mm. who follows me on social mm. media knows where my second home is. But I also have a home where I was born, where my family is, where I'm presently living now. But I feel like I'm not 100% here. So... Let me, because you said I've been studying with you. Michael, <laughs> Thank you. where is home? Home is here for me. Where is here? Here in, I'm struggling with Lagos because I've been in Lagos now for a while. I am yeah. tired of Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother debrief. <laughs> you know, but uh, home would be, home would be Lagos mm. um, here. Um, Do you feel like you have a second home? Are your loyalties my heart, divided? Where my heart is, uh, is different. But isn't home where your heart yeah, is? That's, that's the challenge. Because you see, I, I recently returned. I was there, you know, to, you know, my kids are there, some of my kids are there. And I took a walk in the neighborhood. And I was like, Lord, this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm. You know, this is where my heart is. You know, I could feel all my creative juices. I could feel everything just coming into play. Things that I love doing. And I'm like, is it a crime, you know, to, not to be here? Yeah. So for me... Yeah, this is... I don't think I got an answer from Michael. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what about you. I really don't feel like I got an answer from Michael. Um, <laughs> He's confusing me more. He's like, I don't know. I hope to share, but my heart is there. Um, yeah. For me, I mean, 100% home is here. Home is Nigeria. Mm. Really? Home is Lagos. I, I literally, like I said, I never imagined myself moving back. But since moving back, I can't imagine myself going away. Yeah. Um, the reality is I enjoy being able to travel. And yes, like, I need to be able to travel to just breathe in some sanity a little bit. But I think home is here. One, my heart is fully here in mm. terms of invested in cultural change, invested in improving our economy, the next generation. I'm invested in Nigeria. I can't imagine myself going somewhere else. I think if I were to go back to England, yes, I might be able to work, but I wouldn't believe that I'd have as much to offer. Mm, okay. Whereas I believe there's something that God has pulled out, is pulling out of me to bring and live in Nigeria. So my heart is familiar. Sounds like a familiar. Been mm. there, you know? There, have a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, is yeah. the t-shirt so new? Is it, has it been washed? Has, has it been laundered? Yeah. You, know? you know? So I, I'm almost like, I know the answer to this question, but I'll ask anyway. Do okay. you regret? Are, that's too broad. Are there moments that you do regret the move? Um, moments, not a complete regret, but moments. Even at that, I don't know about moments. I mean, I get very frustrated when I get to the airport, but like, mm. I don't feel... I don't think that I regret it. And maybe, mm. again, part of it has been wrapped up in moments of privilege or whatever. Mm. Maybe I haven't experienced the things that will really question my yeah. investment yeah, in being here. But I, I, I don't think I would say that I regret it, even in moments. There are times that are frustrating. Like, driving in traffic will definitely you test you. Everybody. Like, I always mm. thought I was a very yeah. calm person. Yeah. Then you drove in Lagos traffic. Nigeria it knows how to pull it out of I'm you. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, Michael, what about you? I don't think I have. I don't have any regrets at all. Because um, the continent is a beautiful one. Um, the people are beautiful. Um, 
living in England, living in the US, you know, I see a lot of superfluity of nothingness, let me mm. put it that way. But in terms of being in touch with your inner self, um, I have experienced that here. Um, these are my people, these, it's my culture, it's my food, it's my, you know, there's a lot that's not right and mm. it can be frustrating, but at the end of the day, the question is if things were really working the way they should, will I rather mm. stay here or would I want to go there? Mm. All right, gentlemen, we're going to have to wrap on that note. It's been quite interesting. I think this conversation is just even starting. Correct. The year of return is 2019. Ghana is making a whole year-long program about it, but it has started a conversation across the continent in terms of reaching out to Africans in diaspora. What can they give? What can they offer? What can they do? And we do know a number of people. There are doctors who do medical treatments, come back mm. home. There are individuals who have offered their, um, offered their services in terms of public service. Some of the stories have been great. And we also know some stories that have not been so good. We even know people who have run back um, to their other homes after experiencing Nigeria or Africa for some time. But I'll leave it to you guys to decide. I think one thing I take away from this is that regardless of anything, Nigeria is in us. Africa is in all mm. of us. And whenever we go anywhere, there's always going to be some part of our souls that looks for connection back to the continent. And I think that's something we all take away. Regrets? I'm different than these two gentlemen. I have moments, many, many, many moments of them. Sometimes yeah. when there's no lights for yeah. two or three days, when I'm in Lagos traffic and I'm in, encountering Danfos and Keke and Okada, and I'm like, why am I putting myself through this? But I will agree with Michael. It's because there's something absolutely beautiful. Africa is complex. It's, mm. it's beautiful. It has so much potential and so much hope. And we want to tell that story. We look forward to hearing from you next time again on NC Debrief. Do make sure that you stay with News Central. We have so much great stuff for you guys. Go to our website, www.newscentral.ng. Follow us on all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, as well as fa uh, Facebook at News Central TV. And make it a date with us. Um, NC Debrief will be back next week, Friday, same time, 1 p.m. West African time. And we'll be looking to have a conversation with you and with our guest. I'm Tudu Lokwe Adile Rubalogun. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, my name is Tolu. You're watching New Central TV. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel.